Hey guys, sorry it's a bit noisy in here. I'm printing uh, support for my webcam. This one was a bit too flexible. Uh, it still worked, but yeah, too flexible. So uh, yeah, I want to do another unboxing just like I did with the CR20 last week. Uh, I am um, actually going to unbox this thing right here, which is the palette. Um, I am so eager to try this. It's going to make me able to print uh, using multiple filaments into one. So basically it brings multiple filaments uh, cuts them, fuses them together, and makes one filament with multiple colors or materials. So this is going to be quite fun. Uh, I look forward to trying that. So this is what I received, the palette 2. Uh, it's, um, it's extremely heavy. So the thing is, it, it weighs like three kilograms, but it's small, so I think there's a lot of stuff going on in there. So if we open the lid, oh, it's magnetized. Wow, that's that feels sturdy as hell. Um, so there's a lot going on in there. I think there's a rotating thing right there. Um, it's probably as the wire goes into the splice core, the splice core then cuts it in half uh, with a conical cut, which is why it needs to turn. And... Um, and then it fuses uh, the, the wires back together, so, so that makes sense. Um, there are here, there's four um, external holes right there that um, are basically guides for the, the four wires. So, um, so yeah, you've got two wires coming in that way and going back up that way. Two wires going in uh, straight that way and into the, the splice core. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it looks like there's a lot condensed in a little bit of space right there. Uh, that's some high-level engineering, so I'm really impressed with uh, with this, and it really shows that it's sturdy. Um, I also got the the canvas hub, uh, and the thing is, I thought it was just like a web interface for this, uh, but actually, uh, it's um, it's an well, it's a, a Raspberry Pi with uh, with OctoPrint on it. That is something I didn't know 20 minutes ago, and yesterday I bought. A Raspberry Pi to put Octoprint on it, so that was stupid. Um, so yeah, I, I'm probably gonna return it and um, and keep this. I do hope I can put Octolaps on this uh, this Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm not sure that I can, so I contacted uh, uh, the Palette team and they're but they're really efficient, so I'm, I, I don't have a doubt that they'll answer quite fast. So this comes with two interfaces. The first one, uh, where you can just screw it into something. Uh, a support, I don't know which one. I think this is gonna be enough for me. I'm just gonna lay it on my table like that. So it should do the trick. Um, also, it comes with uh, with this power supply. Um, and by the way, I'm also quite impressed with uh, just the, the way this power supply works because you can uh, switch, you know, between multiple uh, outlets, but the thing is, I've never seen an interface like this where you can just switch the outlets. Sorry, that easily. So, anyways, I'm gonna go on to the 220 volt power supply. Um, that was uh, with the pallet, and the thing is, they gave me another one with the, the canvas hub. I'm not sure that this one's necessary, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, anyways, this is uh, this is gonna be connected to the um, to my uh, my uh, wall outlet this probably too, and then I'm gonna use this to control both the palette and the printer and maybe my webcam. So um, there's also plenty of cables with this and also something I noticed the the velcro is just not your usual velcro, it's like a really really high quality velcro, I'm really impressed. It's, uh, it's not like a, a hard surface and a soft one, it's two hard surfaces but once they're fixed together it's you really have to pull uh, extremely hard to pull them apart and uh, yeah so this comes with uh, this thing here that you can uh, use to just fix it on a, a wall or something but it feels extremely sturdy so uh, yeah much sturdier than your average velcro so yeah it's, overall this material the hardware is quite impressive it feels very sturdy and uh, so yeah this is an expensive product but I think it's probably gonna be worth it so now I'm gonna set everything up because I want to try uh, multi-material printing and especially printing with supports uh, soluble supports I got hips that's um, soluble with a D limonene and um, and I'm gonna try to do uh, some prints with that uh, using only one extruder which is really nice 
because uh, most printers that have two extruders cost much more and this one does not. So yeah, this palette is going to be quite fun to test out. Last thing, I got some stickers, so I'm going to put a sticker on that palette and it's going to look that much better. There you go. So let's set this up and try a print. Oh, there's just one thing I forgot. There's this uh, spool holder which is really long and awesome because you can put four and it's very easy to remove or just put back. Uh, much easier than on uh, most that I've seen. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool and again, sturdy materials. So I'm currently away from the noise and you can see this two colored filament which means that I succeeded in setting up the, the palette. Uh, the thing is I had a few issues, um, I had, well, one major issue is that the palette actually duplicated, using the cheat code that I gave it, it duplicated my Z offset, which is something I wasn't expecting and uh, I don't know if it's a mistake that I made or something but uh, it, it completely dug into the printing bed so I had to, to buy a new one and restart. Uh, but that was just like the only problem I got. Um, well, technically I had another problem that was entirely my fault. I got the canvas hub, which is basically something where you connect your palette and your printer together and you're going to be able to control them using a Raspberry Pi that's uh, incorporated in the canvas hub, but it was a, a Raspberry Zero and it's not powerful enough for a webcam, so I ordered a new Raspberry 3 and did the setup all over again. That was entirely my fault. So apart from this little Z offset mistake, the setup was actually quite easy compared to what I expected considering I know nothing about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, let me show you what I got here. So the thing is I managed to set up uh, the full canvas hub which is uh, basically what um what the company that makes palette has to offer. They have the, the palette that comes in this packaging, it's called Mosaic by the way, the company, and, um, and it comes with the canvas hub which I'm going to return. They were nice enough to uh, allow me to return it uh, when I told them that I wanted the, the webcam and that I needed a Raspberry 3 and not this one. So, uh, so yeah, with my Raspberry 3 I now have this setup, so I've got my my uh, webcam, I think, my, uh, my printer and my palette that are connected and it's all powered using a USB and it gives all the information to this canvas hub where I can control my printer uh, from my computer and I even set an online control of this so if I go to getanywhere.yo I can actually get the live feed of the webcam and control temperature, axes, uh, cancel the print if there's an issue with the print which is amazing so that's, uh, that's all thanks to the software that canvas, that palette uh, included right there, that uh, mosaic, sorry, included, and I can even access it using my phone and control my printer using my phone, which is completely crazy. So yeah, um, this is all set up quite easily because mosaic already has the setup for the Raspberry Pi 3B, which is great because they're basically letting you use their own, uh, the, the things that they sell, they let you make them yourself, which is really, really nice. And um, and uh, if you don't want to spend that time, uh, you know, setting it up, you can also always buy it, and it's very intuitive. Uh, now let me explain how the palette works. So you've got the palette over there, and basically, it's feeding four filaments over there. I've got a white one, red, black, and gray, and uh, it's gonna bring a filament in there, split it in half then retract the filament, bring another one here and fuse the two together which is why you get results like the ones I showed earlier that are right here uh, the half blue half red filament and the thing is uh, right now I'm printing something for for work but as you can see I'm using support uh, now since this is a PETG a PETG uh, print I'm using black and red PETG and this is actually PLA and PLA so it's actually compatible and the thing is PLA is a very good support material for PETG because it can be easily removed so I'm doing the bottom with PLA then I'm doing the print itself with Head G, and I'm going to do some details inside with PLA, uh, but since it's going to be incorporated in the 3D, uh, it's not going to be a problem uh, and it's not going to, you know, uh, get ripped off or anything. So it's going to be easy to take the support off. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, there's so many advantages using this because I'm using four materials, four different materials in there, thanks to one tube, which is absolutely incredible. And as you can see here, I've got some black lines and gray lines in here. That's a technology that I find fascinating. Basically, when you switch between two filaments, uh, it's going to 
make like a perch tower. It's called a perch tower. It's the thing that I just showed you with two colors. It's actually just a block of material. And the thing is it purges the, the material uh, for, from when you're switching from black to gray, for example. That way, um, the moment when black and gray are kind of superposed, well, you don't have it on the print, so it's seamless. You basically see a change in color instantaneously. And so your print is absolutely perfect and it's perfectly by color. Here you don't see any transitions inside because the transitions are all made here. Right now, as you can see, it's printing something black and it's soon uh, gradually going to become gray. So right now you can see it's getting lighter and that's because the black is becoming gray and then once it's fully gray, it's going to go back into the print and print some gray stuff, which is completely crazy okay I already finished filming the video the previous world well, the video you're watching right now but uh, the thing is I'm interrupting myself because I want to show you something really nice uh, the palette also uses machine learning to make uh, itself better and also there's something that it does is it pauses the print uh, if it's not connected to the to the hub it uh, it pauses the print and that way the palette knows that the print is paused and it can adjust the length of the filament depending on when the pause happened. And here it, it pings the, um, the printer and if the printer basically pings back or pongs, um, the palette knows where it's at. So here you can see at the beginning of the print I had a small problem. Let me see if I can adjust. See there's one layer in the green side that, that's become black and uh, it actually uh, pinged and ponged and, um, and adjusted itself and corrected the mistake while it was printing so that's I mean it's crazy it's like it's it's pretty cool and uh, this print that I'm doing right now uh, it's at 40 splices and it has 1600 splices to do uh, so it's gonna be a very long print as you can see you can follow the pings and the pongs as they go uh, it's it's pretty Pretty, pretty nice. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very advanced software. So yeah, let's go back to, to the, the, the video I, I filmed earlier. Uh, also, the time lapse I'm going to be talking about at the end of this video is going to be this time lapse because uh, I hadn't adjusted the camera's uh, parameters and now they are adjusted. So the time lapses look much better. So honestly, I'm extremely satisfied with this purchase. Um, Mosaic team was really there to support me when I uh, when I did all that and uh, so yeah they're, they're a really great company and honestly uh, this is an unbiased opinion uh, I think that this is the greatest innovation since the invention of FFF technology so basically since uh, filament printing was introduced I think this is the most advanced way uh, of using it and it's just such a big innovation I'm completely fascinated by what they managed to do and honestly for anyone who prints using uh, printers uh, at home uh, filament printers don't get a double extruder printer honestly just get a single extruder like a CR20 that I have which is amazing and the palette because wow you know it's just it's incredible so yeah I highly recommend it I'm really satisfied with my purchase and I will be making plenty of time lapses uh, I'm going to show you a time lapse uh, of this print uh, before I go. That way, you can see just how cool it is. Uh, and yeah, honestly, I'm just I'm just thrilled that I got this now. One final comment: after two days and uh, a couple hours of printing, I have this right here which has four colors and is pretty crazy. Uh, the thing is, here I removed a part, that's because, well, it was pretty stupid to print something so long as this right there uh, in one go, so it actually detached itself from the plate. And, um, and so I cut it off and I'm printing like a replacement section right there. And um, just a few comments before I go, I still wanted to say that, uh, so here I was impressed with the bridging, because uh, it, it just printed like one dot of blue, and still managed to pull the filament all the way to the other side of the gap and uh, I did not use any support for this uh, for this part so it's actually quite impressive that it managed to do this this bridge right there oh and also the filament purge block is just huge which is a big waste of matter this is filled it's no infill it's just 
full material. So, yeah, it's a bit of a waste, but it, you know, it's a sacrifice that you have to make if you want something as beautiful as this. Um, also, it didn't complete the print. It almost finished it, but uh, I had a problem with the splice core. Uh, some filament got jammed. And uh, I've been using it for about 2,500 splices, so one jam every 2,500 splices is not too much. Uh, it's a bit of a problem because, uh, for example, here I failed a three-day print. So uh, I, I, I have to figure out how to, to fix that, but I'm talking with, uh, with the Mosaic team and they're really helping out. So, so I have no doubt that I will be finding a solution quite soon. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, a pretty impressive solution to multi material printing and I'm pretty happy about this. It's actually a peanut dispenser. So <laughs> thanks for watching this video.